pastor. Let me give you a new title, interim pastor. You say, I don't want to be an interim pastor. Well, here's the truth. You are an interim pastor. Every one of us that serves in a church is an interim pastor. Unless you're planning to serve at your church until Jesus returns, and some of you may have that plan, you are an interim pastor. Someone will be after you, and your biggest leadership decision as a pastor is preparing your church for the next pastor. How many of you remember Brett Favre, or Farver, or, or however you want to say it, no matter how many times you try and say it, you have to agree that he tried to retire too many times. We all watched the news conferences from his first retirement, from his second retirement, from his third retirement. When would the guy finally just give up and go home? Finally. Unfortunately, Brett's story is a whole lot like pastors serving in the ministry. We wait too long. We don't plan ahead. We think we've got one more year. It's widely known that the top fear humans have is of being in public speaking. In fact, in most studies, public speaking is something people are more afraid of than death. As Jerry Seinfeld said, people would rather be the subject of a funeral than the person speaking at the funeral. What God has given you in an ability to get up in front of people and not just do public speaking, but speak to them a word from above, that's an amazing gift. Unfortunately, in the work that we do with churches all over the world, helping them transition, we see that that same gift, that same ability to stand up in front of the masses can have a shadow side and become a whisper in your head saying, you've got one more season. You've got one more season. The time to start transition planning is now. Even if you're only going to be at your church a few years or if you're planning on retiring at your church, now is the time, now is the season. In corporate America, it's becoming not just common, but required that companies that are publicly traded think about transition planning. In fact, it's not uncommon for a CEO to put as the first item at his first board meeting a talk about who will come after me. Have you had that talk with your board? What would it be like to let the cat out of the bag that you're not going to be the pastor forever? Everyone wants to talk about transition planning until it's their own transition that's being talked about. What would happen if at your next board meeting you said, let's talk about the day I'm not here anymore? Hopefully they wouldn't move right to a vote. Hopefully you'd make it one more meeting. But I bet what would happen is you'd have a good productive conversation about how we would be leaning into our young associates how we might be looking at pastors of churches of similar type, how we might be developing relationships with places that would be pools of candidates. I've got one friend that I talked to who is at the church where he was the associate pastor, went away and served two churches and came back and succeeded the senior pastor. The senior pastor that he served under kept in touch with him about once a year just to nurture the relationship what would happen if you kept in touch with all of your previous associate pastors, all of your key lay leaders, all the up and coming seminarians, just one phone call a year to stay in touch so that there could be some plan in place, a pipeline, if you will, of people that you or a search committee could go to. Even more urgent than planning for your eventual transition out is planning for the transition no one expects. What would happen if you got hit by a bus today? Who would preach Sunday? What would happen to the church? Would there be money in the budget set aside for someone to come in and preach during a three or four month illness or a long recovery or an unforeseen search for a new pastor? Are there provisions in your budget that allow for an insurance policy to help you, your spouse, and the church in the event of an untimely death? People don't like to think about sudden successions, but if you're a board member watching this, or if you're sitting in that pastoral chair, you need to plan for an emergency succession. I'd say one in four or five of the searches that we do to help churches find their leaders comes on the heels of an unforeseen ending. We end up hearing stories about how we should have prepared. We end up hearing stories about we don't know who would lead. Do you have an envelope that's got some names in it that would help the board know where they should look for a successor should you 
suddenly be gone. These are things we don't like to think about. But friends, whether you're there for 50 years or five minutes, you are not just a pastor. You're an interim pastor. And you're a steward of God's people, a shepherd over his flock. Take care of the sheep for the long haul. Be thinking about your transition for now and for the day that you're gone on to the next chapter of your ministry or life. 